Morning. Got to comb his hair. <laughs> you know, I was thinking this morning that I kind of like my office, don't you? I mean, yeah, it's outside. Mmm, sausage, not kosher. <laughs> And yeah, kind of open to the elements. Sure, I got a roof, you know, a patio. But I've got so much room to enjoy. I get a chance to see when the hummingbirds come, or the birds when they, the little chickadees and some of the sparrows and starlings and things that go flying through the bushes here. I get a chance in the winter to hear the crickets you know, chirping, and we even have frogs, although next door, I think they may have, you know, kind of scared them off for a while, but this winter, I think maybe they'll come back. I get a chance to look out my front, and sometimes I see peacocks, which was really weird. Sometimes I've even seen a gaggle of, cur a gaggle of, a gaggle of turkeys. That was really weird. Once there was even, a, I think, a llama that jumped in a pool, my wife saw. But that was at a different apartment. But the point is, is I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. I enjoy where God has placed me today. Now, tomorrow, I'm prepared. You know, he could tell me to move somewhere or to go somewhere. And, it might take me, oh, I don't know, a few days to get ready, but, you know, I could do it. Now, I still have my backpack, you know, and it's kind of funny because it used to be that as soon as God said something, I jumped up and went. Sometimes too soon. <laughs> but when the wind blows and when the winters come and when the seasons change, then I have to put on clothes. You know, I'm a typical Alaskan, so I know that all you need to do to live in a cold land is to layer it. You know, you start off with your normal clothes that you're wearing, maybe your underwear. <laughs> but you have to put something on, you know, and the more layers you put on, the warmer you'll be. And you use certain layers for different functions, some to wick away sweat, you know, and to take away moisture so that you don't freeze, you know, yourself some to trap that moisture, you know, in its content, like wool, you know, you put wool over the wicker, kind of wicking stuff, you know, so that way the wool absorbs that and holds it there, you know, and then you put something over that to protect you from the outside elements. But basically, the whole idea of putting on clothes is to protect you from the elements, to protect you from the weather, to help you to survive in a climate it might be a little harsh for you because you're, you don't have as much hair on your body as I do. And boy, do I have a hairy chest. <laughs> Typical. But if I went out in the dead of winter when I lived in Nome, Alaska, and if I walked out there stark naked without any protection on whatsoever, no clothes, just, you know, me and my bare flesh. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. I die. That's kind of what happens to Christians when they don't put on their armor of God, so to speak. Because, you see, Paul wasn't really trying to tell you something about putting on armor, like, you know, being a Roman soldier. He was just using what was common in his day. And... It's kind of like today, we need to do the same thing. You know, you kind of need to understand what the armor of God is. I mean, while there's shield of faith, yeah, you know, but you need to shield yourself with faith, meaning that you don't get all kind of blown out just because you got worked up about, worked out, and you know, something that's going on inside of you about salvation. You kind of got to know in your head 
your helmet of salvation, that you're saved, you know, so that you don't get worked up by way of not having faith in what God has done. Your shield of faith. So there's certain things that sometimes are just really kind of like storybook, you know, it's kind of like teaching you a lesson. And that's kind of like why, you know, I like my office, because you see, when I want to come out here in the morning, like this morning, and it's cold out, I need to put clothes on or I'll catch cold. And you know, if I don't put something around my neck, well, that's where a lot of heat loss is. So, you know, I need to put on something that has kind of a high neck. If I don't put something on that's covering my my arms, then I lose it because right here, my veins come to the surface and guess what? I lose heat from there. If I don't cover my head, I lose heat from there. If I don't cover my ankles where, again, you can see veins, I lose it there. And my inner thighs, basically, where it comes to the surface, yeah, same thing. So there are certain key points in my body that are susceptible to the cold. And if I don't protect them, then they will catch a chill and I may catch a cold or pneumonia or some other problem because I didn't protect myself from the cold. That's what God wants to do and he wants you to do daily. He wants you to protect yourself from the onslaught of what's going on in the world. Oh sure, you could go out and get involved in every little thing that comes along. Great, if you got time for it, go ahead. I barely have time to, quite frankly, nuke my breakfast. <laughs> now there's a kosher way of cooking. <laughs> You know, take a bite or two, run out the door and go do what I do. So because I don't have much time, I coordinate, plan out, and get prepared ahead of time for what I know is going to happen every day. Make perfect sense to me. Since I don't see so well, I go out and I buy these <coughs> cheap styling glasses at 99 cents. If you don't know, I like 99 cent stores. 99 cents so that I can, A, be styling. Because <laughs> after all, I throw them away. But, uh, you know, 99 cent glasses and I kind of stick them around, you know, like here and in there and out in the living room and different places so that... I know I have them readily and handily available so I can call upon them or I can grab a hold of them when I need them. And when I need them, believe me, I want them right now. I plan on having all my coats so that they're nearby so that if I get a chill I can put it on soon and quickly so I don't go very long without having to be warmed up. When I want to have, because I'm always recording videos, a Bible nearby, I make sure that I have Bibles stationed in different places so that way I can go ahead and, guess what, film with the Bible there so I can look down at the Word and I can get some of the Word in because that's what I do. I share the Word of God. Because I forget to drink and I forget to eat, because I spend so much time, as Jesus said, you know, my meat is to do the will of the Father who sent me. I don't really get much sustenance that my wife even has to force me to eat sometimes that, you know, I usually take in 6,000 calorie diet, but man, you know, I don't have much time, so I bring it with me now, you know, I plan it to have it, so when I see it, I eat it, and I take care of myself, and I see the Word of God, I prepare myself, I put on clothes, I get ready for my day, and I realize that since I do, I don't worry about everything that's going on around me. I don't have to be concerned about things that aren't important to me. I can focus in on what I'm supposed to do because I've taken the time to plan for my day. Now, planning for my day means that, hey, if it's cold out, I'm putting on clothes. I'm not running out here in just a robe and, you know, some little short shorts or my undies or boxies. 
Not a chance. Woohoo! <laughs> Drafty. But the reason why is because I know by way of experience that if I don't, I'll get sick. And the same thing is true spiritually. If you don't take care of yourself, if you don't plan on the fact that there are some things you need to do for your relationship with God, you will get sick. You will spiritually die if you go to God naked without any kind of covering, without any kind of righteousness, without any kind of forgiveness going on in your life. You may have to restore your relationship at times, you know, by putting on some clothes or putting on some forgiveness or asking for some mercy and grace, but you sure don't want to appear, you know, before the holy God stark naked. Because that's kind of the way he sees you. And I personally would rather have a robe of righteousness over my life than to appear before God as unholy. Not a good place to be. So, in our lives as Christians, we are going to be faced with, just like you can see outside maybe, kind of gray, storms. Because those storms, we're told, will come, we're told to prepare ourselves. Kind of like I just put on this vest. You now this vest is my best phrase of righteousness. Or in this case, my breastplate of warmth. Because this thing says Egley Air Hall here. I used to work up there. Egley Air Hall in Alaska. Did a lot of flying for... I didn't fly. I was the support ground crew that um, I had a Class A CDL and used to do uh, hazmat and fuel fueling of uh, well, jets and other things, but mainly of the helicopters that we flew for Sam Eggman, who was kind of a famous character up there. But he flew all the people around for Discovery Channel's uh, whatever that fishing show is, you know, most dangerous catch or de deadliest catch. And it was cool, you know, it was kind of neat, you know. And um, we went on rescue sometimes, and we did other things too. But, you know, it was kind of neat. You know, it's kind of interesting to see that kind of lifestyle, you know, and living up there. It was wonderful to live in Alaska. I'd go back if I could convince my wife to do it. Maybe if I'd knock her out and just drag her up there. <laughs> Caveman style. But the point is, when I put this on, this particular vest that he gave me, because he gave all of his employees one, this thing is designed to keep me warm. It works very, very well because it was made for that climate. And so when I wear it now and I put it on, it keeps me pretty warm. It works for what it was designed to do. And that's what God has given us his word for. He's designed it in such a way that it's meant to protect us. It's meant to keep us warm. It's meant to keep us safe and secure in the arms of his love when we sometimes don't feel like we're loved. That's why the shield of faith, or in this case, my overcoat of, you know, suit of warmth, is meant to, by way of the Word of God, to encourage us, to remind us, to exhort us, and to teach us that God is with us, that God is always there. We may not feel like it at times, because even though I have all these clothes on, I can feel the wind blowing against my cheek. So part of me says, oh, it's cold. But if I took a sip of hot coffee, I'd say, no, nah, I'm not cold anymore. I got warmth inside. And that's kind of what it is when you hear God speak, is that you feel warm inside. But sometimes God doesn't speak directly to you. Sometimes God goes silent on you and kind of waits to see what you'll do. Or sometimes he's, for whatever reason, just quiet, patient still. And you, if you prepared yourself, have no problem with not hearing from God at some point in time. You don't go through the, all the, you know, 20 questions of, oh God, do you hate me now? Oh no, no, no. You know, you know where you're at, whether you sinned or not, whether you've asked forgiveness, whether you've taken care of those issues that are part of your normal life. But you also need to put on, as it were, your suit and your vest and your pants, you know, and make sure that you got shoes on because God wants you to be ready for the day. So you need to be prepared, like the Boy Scouts say. You need to be prepared for the day. You need to make yourself aware of 
the full armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, you know, the shield of faith, you know, the belt of truth, you know, a lot of people that I find, you know, more often than not, and this is particularly true of Christians, they get caught with their pants down, you know, and it's quite frankly because they're dealing with religion and not relationship. You see, when you deal with relationship, God tells you the truth. He don't lie to you. He tells you what's true. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who prayed not to give to all men liberally. He'll tell you where you're at. Ask him. Read it. You won't like it. You're a sinner. <laughs> you're a screw up. Yes, you are. And there, but for the grace of God, go I, because by the grace of God, I am what I am. But that's all I am. <laughs> Just grace. <laughs> because believe me, in me, there's well, no good thing. <coughs> and most Christians know that. Although sometimes they forget and they get kind of carried away thinking they're, oh, now made perfect. No, you're not. <laughs> Quite frankly, I smell something and it ain't me. Well, maybe it's me and you. But the point is, we know <coughs> that God chooses to prepare us for meeting Him. He chooses to meet with us, to inspire us, to learn from Him what we need to do to be able to live with Him in a way that is holy as well as acceptable in His sight. And part of that life of living with Him is learning how to dress. You know, how to put on the right clothes. You know, righteousness. And so when people lie, when people cheat, when people steal, it's almost as though they forgot to put the belt of truth on. They literally have their pants falling down their waist. And they look like some of the guys walking around with their pants down around their knees. You know, they have to pull their shirt down farther in order to cover up their butt because guess what? Nobody wants to see that. Well, quite frankly, that's what it's like. A lot of Christians forget the truth. They forget the fact that you have to tell the truth, you have to live in the truth, and you have to walk in the truth of God's love. But the truth is the fact that God is truth. He doesn't lie. So we can't either. We can't make up white lies, fallacies, phony ideas, salesman gimmicks, you know, do all kinds of questionable things that, quite frankly, you know, you can keep trying to make that belt fit, but if it's too big, you know, and you've got your belt of truth so wide that it incorporates the entire world, it ain't much good for holding up pants, is it? But when you get caught with your pants down, the first place you need to look at is, are you in the truth? In other words, have you been lying or are you telling the truth? Most Christians I know, that's where their problem lies, they get caught with their pants down. So, having that truth wrapped around our waist and cinched up, tightened, so that we always tell the truth, make sure we're telling the truth, so help me God. <laughs> and believe me, God better help you because you'll lie just as fast as I will because when you get caught in it, you don't want to admit it. So truth is always that thing that usually most people fail to put on, you know, in the morning, their pants. You know, even though everybody puts their pants on the same, not everybody puts their belt on the same. <laughs> Believe me, <laughs> boy. And so, with the belt of truth, we recognize that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That we're supposed to run towards, not the enemy. We're supposed to run towards, you know, not fighting, not run at or away from sin. But rather, we're supposed to run with the preparation of the gospel of peace. To share something that makes for peace. Peace with God and peace with fellow man. That peace of God that comes beyond all understanding is from Jesus. So the only way that we can do that is through the gospel. The gospel being the good news that God wants to have a relationship with you and he wants you to have a relationship with the Son. And the only way to have a relationship with the Son is by doing what he said to do. Which is, you know, of course, ask forgiveness, get saved, be born again, you know, become one with the Spirit, and one with God, you know, and begin to grow in that relationship and begin to develop peace. Because most people don't have much peace nowadays. They walk around barefoot. 
And you can really tell. You can tell when somebody doesn't have much peace. As a matter of fact, you can tell when they have no peace because they're running around barefoot. They're always stubbing their toes on something. And that's what I find true about Christians in issues where they want to be violent and they want to be angry and they want to be mad and they want to protest and they want to contest and they want to do everything to arrest their development because that's what happens. They no longer grow as Christians. They're busy stubbing their toes and tripping over their own feet. They put on the shoes of the preparation of gospel peace, wouldn't have so much problems. But you see, those are the things that are my responsibility. Those are the things I'm told I should do for myself. You know, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, you know, shield of faith, you know, take out my sword of the spirit and start killing people. No, a sword of the spirit is the spirit of God or the word of God, as we told the sword of the spirit is, is able to rightly discern the intents and the direction of a man's heart so it's able to cut asunder the spirit from the flesh and the soul from the spirit. So that way we can tell the difference between what's going on in a person's life on the outside as opposed to what's going on on the inside because the Word of God tells us that. And that's what the sword of the spirit is. It's kind of like you go, it's almost like a magnifying glass. You know, the sword, well, it's nice, you know, and it can quench the fiery darts of Satan. You know, that's what shield of faith does. But, you know, sword can kind of like, you know, be out there and you can kind of think that you can name it, claim it, you know, and just use it and abuse it, you know, in some way. But most people that I find when they're trying to use the sword are holding it by the wrong end. And they don't realize that though you may have the sword of the Spirit, God doesn't tell you to use the sword of the Spirit. He just tells you have it. Because at some point in time, the Word of God will go forth from you as He chooses to use you, not as you choose to use His Spirit. Big difference there. One is directed by God, the other is directed by you. You've seen people out there. You know they've got the Spirit of God. They must because things are happening. But they're using it themselves as opposed to being God directing them to use it. Balaam's a prime example. Some of it happens in Christian lives today. So, when we take care of ourselves and prepare ourselves for the day, we meet God in a humble, simple way because we're ready. It's kind of like when you go to work. How much do you get ready to go to work? The same thing is true is what you should do when you wake up in the morning and get ready to meet your God. Because every day of your life, whether you recognize it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you accept it or not, God meets you. Sometimes He sees you half naked. Sometimes He sees you half dressed. But frankly, if you went to work with you know half your clothes on, I don't think you'd be working very long. If you went to school with only part of your attire on, I think they'd send you home to get dressed. The only place where people don't tell you bluntly to go home and get cleaned up or get fixed up or get the rest of your clothes on is church. You see, when you come to church kind of like half-dressed, they just try to teach you, look, you know, you, you, you need to put on some clothes. You know, you need to put on the, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, your feet shod with preparation gospel peace. You need to come in out of the cold, put some clothes on, get warmed up, then go back out and do what God has told you to do. Don't run out there stark naked and think that you're going to accomplish anything. Because, quite frankly, without the right clothes on, you're not going to last long. Just saying. You take it for what it's worth. If it means something to you, then God is going to bless you. But if it doesn't mean anything to you, take a look in the mirror. The emperor's clothes may be not so nice, not so pretty. You might be standing there naked, and everyone else can see it except you.